Last week, we arrived in Cape Canaveral and then attempted to leave unsuccessfully. And now we're fixing the dinghy and waiting for a weather window. I'm Sid, and these are my best friends. My mom, Kim, my dad, Ty, and my sister, Maddie, who before starting her own adventure, joined us in rocking out a state-of-the-art refit on our floating home. Now, we're ready to set sail to die with memories, not dreams, and live dauntless. All right, so it is now Saturday morning, and I came this morning and I ground all of the uh, glass that I put in yesterday. I put a, uh, some 1808 uh, really thick biaxial top and bottom on all the holes. And then after I got that sanded smooth with a slight recess, I went and put some e-glass in top and bottom. So there's a nice layer of e-glass um, that's going to allow me to sand out, get a nice smooth finish before I throw some gel on it. I'm kind of fighting against the clock here. I used uh, fast set epoxy this morning. So hopefully we get a good setup and a good tack. So here in a few minutes, I'll be able to uh, sand it out and then gel it with, uh, and I'll mix that, uh, that gel coat with mech a little hot as well. I really, really want to get the boat done the, and re-drilled and uh, get the boat back in the water before they close today. The they close at 3.30. Otherwise, uh, I suppose there's no sense in rushing because they're not going to be back till Monday anyhow and they can put us in, in, the, uh, in the water Monday. So now I'm moving on while I wait for all that stuff to set up to some electronics. And what I've done here, you're going to see is um, the tack is factory, obviously, and we have a bilge and a, a tricolor light um, switch. I'm going to put another switch panel in here and that is going to basically be our on off for our Garmin Striker Striker 4. Anyway, our little chart plotter and depth sounder and uh, also I'm going to put in a switch for the underwater lights. So we've got some cool blue underwater lights down below and yesterday at West Marine I picked up these little courtesy lights I'm going to put in front and back of the console. So when I turn on the underwater lights at night, um, we'll be able to light up the inside of the dinghy. I think the girls will like that and be kind of cool. So, here we go. I'm going to drill more holes in Kim's boat. Alright, so I have the waterproof USB charger, which is pretty snazz. She plugs in here, and then there's these little rubber gaskets that seal the cord, so you can actually leave them plugged in. Close it, hit the lock, and now you can charge your phone if you're using it for Navionics or what have you uh, while you're on the go. And then here is my panel right here, and we're going to call the, the Garmin, the depth sounder, and the uh, underwater lights running lights. So this little guy is going to mount right here. So I just ran back to the boat. I got my fine uh, multi-tool and I'm going to square this up, cut this guy out and uh, get that mounted in and then we'll be able to tie into this lovely pile of, you know what, that's inside of here. Before finally saying goodbye to Cape Canaveral, we needed to make a quick run to the grocery store. So we busted out the scooters and adventured out. On the way to the store, we found this really cool square in front of City Hall, and Dad finally got to see a spaceship. And when we got back... So, this would be a hawk on our rooster. We kinda need that. Yeah, if he could not bend our rooster or break it, that would be sweet. Alright, so, it's Sunday morning, and uh... I came here to sand the first layer of gel that I put on last night and I kind of overbuilt it a little bit. I'm just hoping that I have a little bit more depth to be able to sand and get a flush finish so maybe either not have to add a second layer or a real light second layer of gel. And I discovered that um, my dumbass didn't put enough mech in so the gel, it's now been 18 hours and it really hasn't well, it hasn't set up. I'm not going to dig at it with my fingernail. And so now I've got to sand it all off and start over. So, lesson learned. Carefully measure your Mac on your gel coat so that um, you don't have to do what I do and waste a bunch of sandpaper. It's all loaded up. This is what it does to the sandpaper. Just, it's like I'm 
sanding dried peanut butter. Yeah, I came to see if the uh, the gel that I put on this morning is, is hardened up and it has. So I'm going to have to do two coats, but um, here is that first patch. I don't know how well you can see it. There's a little bit of an outline here. It's a little slightly different color. Um, but I'm going to get this knocked down. It's still a little bit low. And then I can here in a little bit paint on another layer of gel and then be able to block that out and polish it out this afternoon. So I should be able to drill it by tonight and put the anchor points in. And then first thing tomorrow morning, we are going to drop it in the water, put it on the back of Dauntless and get the hell out of here. Last one should be the last coat on the last patch. And then we can let it sit all afternoon and I can sand it this evening just mixed up some gel a little hot with a little extra mech and then I'm just using this inexpensive chip brush to lay it down just past the original sanding marks that I beveled out so that when I sand it out later and block it out it pulls up level with the surrounding gel Pretty good at glass work. This is my first real gel coat repair. No, this is my first gel coat repair, not like. Um, so, we'll see how it turns out. And if I do a good job, you can do what I do. If I don't, don't do what I do. All right guys, so looks like we are done. All the anchor points are in and uh, we have the last electronic thing today was this right here. Put USB cables in here. It's waterproof. That guy's all wired up. And we have our depth sounder. We have our running lights, which turn on these guys down below. We'll show you a nice shot of that. Also, cool underwater lights back here. There's the mod, the uh, transducer for the depth sounder. Our repair is done here. Got our D-rings in. I need to screw this back down to here. We're good to go. That's how we use three and a half days here in Cape Canaveral. At least we got some stuff done. After all that work, Pearl was in desperate need of a bath. Now we're ready to drop her back in the water. And after being on the hard for a few days, she started right up. I missed it, but little miss just decided she was ready to be in the dinghy, didn't you? Yeah, without permission or anything. Bringing a clean and whole free pearl back to Dauntless, we realized just how dirty Dauntless is. She'll get some love soon too. So we're transiting the canal for the fifth time. Uh, we're gonna do a redo here. Uh, we're pushing in to about 20 knots of wind, 18 to 20 knots of wind that's uh, on shore. And we are gonna uh, feed into that. Sorry about that. We're gonna feed into that 
oh, for probably an hour and a half. We got to get out about six, eight miles, nine miles. We'll see where we we'll make the cut, make the turn, and then we'll turn north, and then we'll have the wind on our beam. And it's going to be on the beam all night. So we're going to go from here to St. Augustine. And it's a 17, 18 hour trip at six knots, but I think we're going to make a little better time than that. Um, and we'll get in mid morning tomorrow. So, first overnight on our own boat. Exciting. And I think we're going to have pretty good conditions for it. Way better than it was a couple days ago. Just horrible. So we are making attempt number two to leave Cape Canaveral. It is about 4.25 and we were delayed because they were supposed to do a launch at Kennedy Space Center, but they delayed the launch because they had problems, engine problems or something. So we decided that we are going to do our first solo overnight. So I'm a little anxious, I'm not going to lie. But we've done overnights before, so I'm confident. We've checked the weather and checked the weather and checked the weather and checked the weather. So assuming the weather hasn't lied again, we should be aces. So cross our fingers and wish us luck. I don't know how much filming we'll do overnight, but hopefully the next time we pick up the camera, at least, we'll be in St. Augustine. Cross your fingers. So we didn't film us actually putting the sails up because obviously we needed to talk to each other and focus on what we were doing. However, we got the sails up and we're about to turn the engines off, assuming I don't fall down. <laughs> it's a little rolly. Hold on. Sails are up. We have a reef in overnight for overnight. We got 17 knots of wind right at about 60, 70 degrees. And we're turning the engines off first time. We are sailing. What do you think, Kim? That's crazy. How fast are we going? Oh. Six and a half, seven oh. knots. Okay. Six and dips to six and then it runs up to just over seven. Yeah, well we set that reef line up. Well we by dad setting that reef line up. You did awesome steering into the wind. You did so good. It like changed direction on me a couple times and dad's like into the wind and I'm like two seconds ago I was into the wind. It's much more comfortable with everything on the beam now, isn't it? <laughs> I never thought I'd say that it I want it wind on the beam, but we beat in for what, two or three hours? Yeah. Just beat into it and beat into it because we had to get around the point at Cape Canaveral. And now that we're up past Cape Canaveral, we're coming back in towards the shore and the wind is coming, uh, the wind's gonna start coming around onto our 90, onto our beam. And I think we're gonna start picking up some speed here, but we're sailing. We're sailing we're by sailing. ourselves. <laughs> I knew we could do it. Join us next week as we sail into St. Augustine and explore while we wait for our next weather window. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell so you know when we post our next video. Thank you again to our patrons for keeping us going. Things.